Now, one of the big controversies in Nika's life uh, when she was in this world of jazz was the fact that Charlie Parker died in her apartment in the Stanhope Hotel. And it was the event that got Nika finally ejected from the hotel. Rumors flew afterwards about her and Bird. They were lovers. They weren't lovers. Uh, Why did Nika wait so long to inform officials that Charlie Parker was dead in her apartment and so on? Did you come to any definitive conclusion about what happened on the night of March 12, 1955? Yes, well, absolutely. Now, I, I I investigated many of these rumours, some more outlandish than the others. I mean, there were some marvellous stories. I mean, one had it that Art Blakey, who was apparently her lover, n- not proven instantly, um, came round to see her, discovered Parker in the apartment and was in such a jealous rage that he pulled out a gun and shot Parker in the stomach. Um, there was another rumour that Nika was a drug dealer and that her apartment was so full of drugs that it took two days after Parker, who she'd killed, you know, uh, to clean out all the evidence of drugs. I mean, they were more and more kind of wild and fancy, these And none of those were confirmed? Well, not only not confirmed, but, I mean, there didn't seem to be a shred of truth in any of it, to be honest with you. And, you know, as I said, I'm writing a book, so therefore, you know, in some ways, to have been able to prove something kind of so fanciful would have been quite great. But actually, I think it was much, much more dull. What happened was that he was on his way to a gig in Boston... He was feeling dreadful. His little daughter had died recently. He tried to commit suicide by drinking iodine a few weeks before. He was still um, taking drugs. We know that because we've talked to people who took drugs with him earlier than that. But he was broke. Um, He was in a really shocking state. So he went to see Nika, who he thought was probably one of the few people who would open her door to him. She did indeed. She got him up to her apartment. And then he was in such a terrible state that she called her personal physician, a Dr. Fryman, who came round. And to give you an idea of you know, how Parker was looking, Fryman thought he was in his 60s. Parker was actually in his 30s at right. the time. And um, there was that wonderful line that Fryman said, you know, and Mr. Parker, do you ever take any drugs? And Charlie looked at him and said, occasionally a little light sherry before dinner. <laughs> uh, which we, <laughs> clearly, you know, is not, not, not going to convince anyone. But anyway, he was... She wanted to get him into hospital. Fryman wanted to get him into hospital. He refused. He had fear of hospitals for very obvious reasons. And um, so all she did was to try and keep him warm, try and keep him, you know, together, give him jugs of water. The doctor came round again. And then while watching the Tommy Dorsey show, he started to choke, had some kind of, you know, exploded ulcer in his guts, which has been proven incidentally, and died. So the medical records and the records of the doctor and Nika's own accounts point to actually, you know, a very sad but nonetheless quite explicable and perhaps non-sensational death. But, of course, after that, her life was made unbearable because she became fodder for every tabloid newspaper. And, you know, amongst the jazz community, some people blamed her for Parker's death. And amongst the white community, people thought, you know, what the hell is she doing harboring this kind of, you know, African-American drug addict in her apartment? So, you know, her life changed very significantly from that moment onwards. 